Welcome back, Zero K fans, to Nano It Done. I remain your host, Shadow Fury333, and we are continuing these exhibition matches. And of course, before we start, pointing out there is a tournament, 1v1, the regular 1v1 monthly tournament for November. It's going to be on December 12th, 2015, at 10 a.m. UTC. There's a link to sign up, so go and sign up, assuming that you're not watching this after December 12th, 2015, in which case, go back in time and then sign up. We could use more players. And like I said, we could use more. I mean, just sign up. It'll be fun. Who knows? You may win. Don't don't sell yourself short. Anyway, we're going to be starting out with a game between Anir and Dorsch. Anir is a player I've not actually seen before. And we're on Sands of Time, a map which I'm actually kind of surprised no one's going spiders on because it is actually really good for spiders. Partly because it's really hilly, as can be seen here. Very, very high elevations. Or really, rather, higher elevation grade. I think bots can path? Yeah, they can path without issues, but... Spider bots are awesome here. And also because you have the height differences, you can easily just drop recluses or redbacks and venoms and such behind the hills and up the hills and pop them out and fire. Which they do really well, but both players are in fact going for cloaky bots. And both players expanding fairly quick, just doing their normal economic thing. Actually... Dorsh going for very early energy, not going for metal quickly. This is not what I'd recommend. I would recommend going metal, 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 then energy. And I get that recommendation from Google Frog. I trust Google Frog's recommendations. This actually worked pretty well. And Nier, however, is going for a much healthier economy start overall. This is... So they're starting out fairly well. The wind generators are not doing great. This map works fine for wind generators up on the hill. But down, like, up in the hill, yeah, build wind generators up in these hills, or on the tops of the dunes. Base of the dune, no. You can see the 0.7 to 2.5 there. Yeah, that's... That is much more efficient than 0.1 to 2.5. Even though the wind is picking up quite a lot. So, Anir, fine for economy right now. Dorsh is still struggling a bit. Not even at 10 metal per second yet, at a minute and a half in. That's the threshold you kind of want to be at as quickly as possible, is 10 metal per second. Doesn't matter if your energy starts to f fade a bit, you stockpile a bit of metal. As long as you aren't excessing to get the energy that you need to spend all that metal. It's fine. And here coming in for some quick harassment, there is a Lotus. That Lotus coming in rather quickly will... Yeah, that... That won't be much of a problem. And Dorsch is going in... F Okay, I don't know why they're expecting har the well, expecting to be able to harass the north. I think they might be just trying to go in from the north. Yeah, that's exactly what they're doing. Attacking from the north, expecting that to be not be well defended. However, Anir doesn't have any radar, so yeah, it's actually not very well defended at all. Dorsh also doesn't have radar. This map is not radar friendly. I'm not surprised. This map basically stuffs radar. It's not worthless, but you have to place more of it than you would in a lot of other maps. On flatter maps, you can place like one or two radars, and that's the entire map. This one, with all the hills around, it's very difficult to have radar in good places. Not to mention, because you have to put it on the hill, it's very vulnerable to attacks from the other side. And Dorsch not attacking. Why they're not attacking, I don't know. I don't think they're paying attention to these glaives over here. They really should be, because this is a great timing for attacking. Mind you, they're... Ooh, almost got lucky and killed that constructor. That conjurer had died. Well, actually, they would have given away the harassment early. However, uh, I... Yeah, and does have radar. They just see the glaze popping in here. Dorsch better be quick. And looks like they probably will be quick. Actually, this is... Will this work? I think... Yeah, I think it might. And they're setting up some glaze to try to defend this, but no real defenses around the factory. Dorsch could get rid of the entire factory, get rid of most of these wind generators, really get rid of basically this entire base for free. Assuming they are careful about it. Don't want to be too aggressive. Don't want to be too passive. Just... Make sure you're in the right spots. And just... Still getting a lot of damage in there. Really killing Anir's energy. Like that's like I said before, that's what you want to do. In the last game I mentioned that, you want to kill energy. They did. Anir are now in a really bad position for energy. Dorsh, however, in a really bad position for production. They aren't even building anything out of their factory for whatever reason. I don't know why. That was a pretty decent raid. How much metal was left behind? 400 metal was left behind, so Anir can reclaim to a decent position... But at this point, yeah, that was a that was a strong attack on the energy. Not the best attack, though. Another attack that that Endorsh would be signing his own death warrant. But as a very early harassment, 
Yeah, it's pretty good, Dorsch. They get a couple metal extractors up, they could even out the economy and really push ahead. I mean, they have the energy to, to f have that production work out. Getting a bunch of defenses, I'm not really sure what the motivation for that is. Getting a lot of defenses, not getting a lot of units, and Anir spreading themselves very thin. Pretty much anywhere that Dorsh attacks, they'll be able to deal quite a bit of damage before Anir's forces come in and regroup. The idea from Anir is most likely they want to know where Dorsh is coming from. Like, wherever Dorsh attacks from, that's will they'll, they'll know it's there. They'll know something's coming. This is all these Glazers are. These Glazers are an early warning system. That's it. It's a good early warning system, though. Fairly cheap. Not likely to be reclaimed where it is. The only problem is that that's all it is. And Anina doesn't really have much in the way of defenses if that early warning system is breached. In fact, they're quite open, quite sparse, and have been naked expanding for most of this game. Dorsh, on the other hand, not expanding very much at all. But where they have expanded, they have placed a plethora of defenses. Or plethora of defenses. Unfortunately, going for Rocco against Masculine... I can kind of see maybe if they're thinking that warriors are going to come in... And then they'll go for Rocco's to counter the Warriors, but Anita not going for Warriors. Going Mask Glaive. At this point, I would almost recommend switching off to Gunship. For Dorsh, that is. Like, building up a bunch of Glaives, try to claim what you can, and then switch off to Gunship. Switch off to Rapiers. And then, if they go for Gremlins, well, you have a bunch of Glaives. If they go for a switch themselves, well, you have Tridents you can build. If they go for warriors to deal with the glaives, well, that's when the Rockos become handy. But not really before then. This map is way too big for warriors to be that useful, honestly. It's too big, too hilly. It's You'd basically be committing a lot to what needs to be a somewhat reactive force. Because warriors can only really attack something usefully if they're attacking a bunch of raiders, and raiders can move around very quickly. And there aren't really any choke points. This map is very open. It makes riots a little bit tricky to use. You're basically setting them up to be used on defense. If you have enough warriors, you can march, but... Yeah, it's like... Switching over to warriors at this point is possible. It's doable. And I think Anir could do it. Dorsh, I don't think, has the glaze to do it. Dorsh basically has about... Yeah, at this point they have like 18 glaives to Anir's 25, 6, 29 glaives. Yeah, they have almost half as many, or a little over half as many glaives as Anir. So Anir can get away with not building glaives for the few minutes it would take to go for warriors or Rockos. Dorsh, on the other hand, can't really afford that. The Rockos are basically a hard read, but they have the same mobility problem that warriors do, and that getting around the map quickly is going to be difficult. And Glaive versus Glaive fight, not going to go well for Dorsh. Dorsh's units were all clumped up, and Anir was able to basically get us around on them. Very easily get us around on them. I'm just surprised that Dorsh is not going for a gunship switch. Rapiers would tear... Uh, rapiers destroy Glaives. One Rapier basically one-shots a Glaive. And Glaives can't much do much to him, so it's just a matter of time before the entire Glaive ball is destroyed. And now down go the Rockos, and at this point... And near going for Warriors. Well, they got rid of the Rockos. They might as well. The counter is destroyed. It'll take a little while for those Rockos to be rebuilt. And especially given that Dorsch has a weaker economy, it's going to take even longer. And especially, especially as Dorsch just now getting a caretaker well, and near has two caretakers. They've had 30 metal pushing into this factory this entire time. They're still accessing just due to the amount of economy they have. They could add another caretaker and they'd still be fine. And then, in fact, that's what they're doing. And that will be able to get rid of the storage. Dorsh, on the other hand, just now getting the first caretaker, and that's going to take a while. Like half a minute is a long time at this stage. And especially with Dorsh being behind as they are, half a minute's even longer. Yeah, like Sprung pointed out, no transition. That's, that is weird. Both players, they have tons of income, and yet neither of them going for gunship, which this map is great for gunships. They can even hide behind these hills somewhat. I mean, even when it comes to dealing with anti-air, they, if they land, for the most part in the map, they'll be able to deal with anti-air unless it's right on top of them. And at that point, you just have your own ground units to deal with it anyway. So, yeah, gunships work beautifully on this map. Air can work okay, too, for the same reasons, but gunships allow you to control territory a bit better. Matter of style, but I think gunships, gunships are the more popular option. 
more popular. They're better at taking terrain. They don't require quite as much direct management to be useful. You don't have to order every single attack. And Dor's pointing out in the chat who's watching the replay being cast. They think that Anir is basically just messing with them. I don't know. I don't know. I think Anir has probably just gotten this idea that, well, I can win with Glaives and Warriors and might be a bit stuck. Like, a bunch of Rockos wouldn't be bad. A Gunship Switch would completely destroy it. I don't know if Anir would actually adapt to that. I don't think they're messing. I think, Just watch the way they're setting up. Yeah, they have the Fusion Plant. They're probably a team player, which is probably why they built it. But I think... Ooh, and down goes... Down goes Dorsh's somewhat ablessly named commander. Who... Well, took out a lot of glaives in the burst. Are we going to see a comeback from that? I doubt it. Those warriors are going to be way too scary. But yeah, I think Anir is just trying to get a guaranteed army. And there's on warrior glaive. Like, they just go, well, they have a bunch of glaives. I'm going to build warriors. And they have Rocco, so I'll get glaives. And that will do it. And I'm just going to build that. This is going to do the thing. I think... I'm really certain that an air switch would destroy that. It would completely mess... I mean, don't build Banshees, because Warriors... They don't have the best range, but they have a range enough. But Rapiers would do fine. They'd be beautiful. But we don't see that at all. We instead just see more Glaze and Rockos, and neither player switching. Neither player adding a factory or anything like that. Which is just really unusual. I'll commend Nier for having a lot of production there. Like, they are making sure they are using the metal they're reclaiming. Or just generally gaining, but they are reclaiming. Oh no, sorry, not reclaiming. Overdriving. It's just wind dependent. Or no, no, it's not. What am I saying? How is the overdrive varying? There's no wind. Whatever. The point is, they are. Oh, I guess it's because they're using build power. Yeah, using energy, which means less for overdrive, which means that less goes to the metal that I could use for production. Bit of a chaotic attractor there. However, it doesn't really matter because Anita at this point does have a scary enough army. These Rockos we're dealing with the Warriors would be great. I mean, 12 Rockos, right, sorry, 18 Rockos right here. The, those Warriors, they were on the north side with those Warriors. And how much radar does Dorsch have, by the way? Hardly any. That one radar tower that they built at the beginning of the game is the only radar they currently have standing. And I think the only radar they have ever built. Their commander did not have a radar module on it, so that's it. That one radar. Which kind of sucks, because if they had seen those warriors coming in, that's where the Rockos need to be. So much where the Rockos need to be right now. Unfortunately, they're going to be walking into these glaives and getting themselves killed. And the lotuses, but mostly the glaives. Trying to march defenses on the southeast... While Anir with the Northwest coming attacking here. And Anir finally getting in a switch. Finally getting in an airplane factory. Not sure what they're going to build on that though. Probably going to build Phoenixes. Good old Napalm Bombers are always handy. but Well, at least against this kind of clumped units. But I think the Warriors is going to do the job. Ooh. Good thinking Dorsh. Reclaiming up that field of Glaives that just ran in there. Very good thinking. I mean, it is kind of a path of greatest resistance the way they're playing it right now, but still, again, that reclaim is really handy. They have 40 build power in here, which is good. They need that. And Vulture coming in first. Starting out with just line of sight. I agree with that idea. Having radar and line of sight that high up in the air is going to be very useful. It basically nullifies the effect of the dunes. Not completely. There is still a bit of radar shadow they're going to have to deal with, but for the most part, yeah, it nullifies the effect of those dunes. Unfortunately, that ticked in where too well. Like, Dorsh just throwing out all the tricks. That they, just trying to do anything they can to get out of this. Unfortunately, that mass Rocco being in the wrong place. If those Roccos were on the western nor northwestern side of Dorsh's base, they would have torn apart the Warriors no problem. The Glaze would have still been an issue, but at least the Warriors would not have been. But yeah, I think Dorsh just now realizing where the Warriors are. Yeah, they didn't have them on radar before. 
They had a bit of line of sight just because of losing these metal extractors, but not much. And this will be game. This is game. This is it. The Warriors are going to be marching in here and will tear everything apart. Doors throwing in the towel. That is it. GG. And we have that game done. I'm really surprised neither player went for gunship earlier. And I'm really surprised... I Okay, Anir went for the airplane plant, but just for Vulture? Hmm. I don't know, that... That was a bit odd. Yeah, once you get to like 30... Like, plus 30 metal or so, you pretty much want to switch. And on a map like this, Gunship is quite powerful. Especially when you're against a bunch of Glaives and you feel like you don't know what to do against them. Rapiers. Like, half a dozen Rapiers. They'll get Gremlins up, but Gremlins are so slow, it won't matter. You'll be able to tear apart most of the map anyway. It's such an open map, and Anir hadn't really defended much. Those defenders would not have been much of a threat to a rapier. Well, to a pack of rapiers. Anyway, that's the second to last game. The last game for tonight is going to be... Flipstep vs. Ikins on Akalan Wastelands. Which is not the same map I did last time, but it's very similar. Well, Akalan Waste was the last one. This is Akalan Wastelands, which is a bit more faithful to Foreboding Angel's original which is in turn more faithful to the StarCraft original. Akalan Flats is not in the Legacy of the Void ladder pool, by the way. I actually have not played it. I checked as well. I, I checked the entire ladder pool before starting this, just to double-check whether or not Zelnaga Caverns, Akalan Flats, or whatever map Isle of Grief is based off of, are in the ladder pool, and none of them are. None of them are in the current ladder pool. So, classic, old StarCraft 2 maps. Turn it into 0k maps. Well, turn it into Evolution RTS maps in this case, and then 0k maps. So yeah, that'll be up in a couple minutes, so stay tuned!